Hey everyone, it's uh, my weekly Batman video. Um, I read two books this week that were Batman related. It was really kind of a sidekicks week, wasn't it? Uh, at least in the ones I read. Batman and Robin Eternal, number three, and um, Batman Arkham Knight Genesis, number three. Two really strong books, in my opinion. Um, and the, the main feature is Batman and Robin Eternal because... So many of us now are doing these videos on it weekly, and it makes it a lot of fun to have this weekly book and talk about it every week. Uh, I think uh, Cami Reader seventeen seventeen is on this train now too, and she always is awesome to listen to. I discovered a new channel that I'd never heard of named um, Unmasked Verts. I think a pretty new channel who is covering this book every week. Uh, as I think he stated his intention to keep going with it, and he's done three good videos on it already. So I'll link as many people as I find down below, and there might be some that, that you haven't seen before. Um, as you can tell, I've watched a number of them already, um, so that might color some of my statements. It didn't change my opinion but on anything, but it's focused me on a few issues that I, I didn't really think about before. Um, I thought the writing on Batman Eternal was great, and the characterizations were all really nice. But uh, Reader1717 pointed out, and once she did, I realized she was totally right, that that although Tim Seeley, the writer of the last two issues, has done a good job with everyone else, he has not done a good job with um, Tim Drake. Tim Drake, from what I, now that I think about it, Tim Drake is one note. He's just the guy who says, I'm really good at computers. I can... I can figure out anybody else's computer or whatever. Um, and that seems to be all he says right now. Um, so here's hoping some other writer or Tim Seeley finds interesting things to do with Tim Drake because he is an interesting character, um, as they all are proving to be. There was some really nice Red Hood moments. There was an irony in how light and fun Jason Todd Red Hood was in this issue in the very same week where the darkest Jason Todd ever, uh, but more on that later, but the darkest Jason Todd ever sort of showed up in this issue, at least darkest that I've experienced. Um, I thought the female characters were done very well. They maybe didn't get quite as much screen time as the male, although quite a bit was given to um, Cassandra Kane. But I'm kind of, this left me looking forward to Cassandra Kane and Bluebird exploring the Batcave. Um, I really hope they give some time to that. One thing I've liked about these issues um, is kind of the slow pace. I mean, it's not slow reading, but they take time in each scene. So there's only a, a few scenes in this book. Um, we don't switch scenes every page or anything like that. Uh, we have a big scene in a bar with a discussion between Dick Grayson and Red Hood, and we have a big scene in the Batcave, and and then uh, a fairly lengthy flashback that sort of continues the story of Robin's first encounter with the Scarecrow and the Scarecrow fear gas, and gives us an interesting element about Batman. Um, I also love how, like here we can see that uh, Dick Grayson is being startled by his own memories, um, which I really like that, that little moment there. Um, <clears throat> let's see. I think it was um, Readham Steven who talked about how it was kind of disturbing that Batman really shows no feeling as Dick Grayson kind of pours out his heart about what happened with him with the fear gas and, and his insecurities, and Batman really doesn't acknowledge them. Um, he just turns away from him and starts talking to his computer. And yeah, that's really cold. And uh, we are getting a very cold, dysfunctional Batman lately. Um, but to me, that feels right. I guess there's a trick for the writers. Uh, how do you make um, this cold, hard, slightly screwed up Batman and yet show that he is a good person too? But But... So that's like an interesting balancing act. And right now I feel like we're balancing more towards the side of 
him being kind of a, a crappy person to for a young kid to spend time with. Um, so, but I don't mind that. I mean, I think that is partially true. Funny how the hat puffs out right there. Maybe partially because I've cut my hair very short, but um, not much hair to play with anyway. Sorry for that interruption. <clears throat> vanity suddenly striking in the middle of my usual lack of vanity. Um, yeah, so I really liked all these little beats. Um, as a lot of other people have pointed out, when Cassandra Cain... Uh, it's a really nice moment where she points to the hand, the brain, and the heart on the three different Robins. So I'm really looking forward to uh, more development in Sandra Kane. Um, looking forward to more of a development of all these little sort of details that are being parsed out. I think I would be... I, I mean, I can't at all predict what they're planning to do with this comic. But I'd be perfectly happy if the whole 26-issue series were paced like this, where we took a little bit of time which each, with each scene to stretch it out a little bit in terms of exploring what's going on with the characters and everything. So you could kind of imagine these 26 issues maybe ending up taking place over 10 days or something like that, possibly. And... I'd love it almost as if we keep this crew of Robins and Robin-like characters together um, as they unravel the mystery together and different things about their past come out and different things about Bruce Wayne's past come out. Um, at the end of the issue, they find out that somebody who might be Mother is targeting this beacon tower where Bruce Wayne is going to be there that night. and. Dick Grayson goes off to handle it himself, leaving the others back in the Batcave to be his backup, um, just like, I guess, like Alfred would normally be. Uh, that rung a little bit false to me. Wouldn't the others say, let's all go, or let's a lot of us go? Um, although, on the other hand, I do want to see the, the female characters exploring the Batcave. But um, I thought it was handled really well, uh, the memoryless Bruce Wayne at, at this ball or at, at this um, big party and the chef who, who wants to bring him back in the kitchen and all these people who are in some way enslaved or creations of mother waiting for him to chop him up in, back in the kitchen. I thought it was a lot of people. I mean, that must be like 20 or 30 people who are going to chop him up. Uh for some reason, it seemed like too many people. Maybe if it had been six or seven, that would be enough. Um, will Bruce Wayne's fighting skills come back to him in some way? Uh, presumably, they are completely erased with the um, fixing of his brain by the Dionysium. But anyway, and presumably, uh, Dick Grayson is going to show up in the nick of time. I also thought it was funny that they were all taking out little axes. Um... I kind of would think in a kitchen they would have little chopping knives or something. So I don't know if the axes have any meaning or that was just the artist's choice to give everyone axes. Um, yeah. The other thing, like, I, so I really love this issue, but you do tend to pick on details reading too many Batman books. Um, <clears throat> the chef says, of course, the chef is a fake. Um, he's actually a stooge of mother's. But he says, you know, that someone like Bruce Wayne could make or break his career. Here's a thing that I've been wondering. I thought that Bruce Wayne has lost his fortune. They took Arkham, not Arkham, they took Wayne Manor away from him. I thought maybe he just has enough money to keep, you know, one servant, Alfred, and lives in an apartment somewhere. Um, what is Bruce Wayne's status in Gotham now? Um, is he still running a giant company? Does he own a lot of something? Um, is he, because the Waynes have always been rich, if they have always been rich, um, just have this social status in the city? I don't know if it works that way. Once you're poor, at least I think, you're pretty much forgotten. Um, 
I don't know. Maybe Donald Trump could be poor and then still still get on the news. But um, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they fix that somewhere along the line. So that's that's one little thing that I'm picking at. Um, the other thing that some other people have mentioned is who knows that Bruce Wayne is Batman and we bring everyone to the Batcave uh, that just seemed a little weird. Just, oh, yeah, let's bring all these strangers to the Batcave, you know, with Cassandra Cain and all three women, basically. I don't think any of them know that um, Bruce Wayne is Batman. I think that last we knew, spoiler thought, Bruce Wayne was the person trying to kill her and kill Batman. <laughs> um, although it was Hush who looked like Bruce Wayne. Uh, but I don't think she found out the resolution to that. I don't think Bluebird knows who Batman is. Um, but anyway, I'm really enjoying the way they do Cassandra Cain here and, and look forward to more of that and us learning more about her. All of this, and it's always been a problem with the New 52, seems to slightly play on your knowledge of the past, and I don't have any past knowledge on Cassandra Cain. Um, is slightly plays on your knowledge of the past that at the same time they're free to have changed the past because it's the new 52 not the old dc universe so um yeah i don't even know because i haven't read enough red hood in the new 52 exactly what red hoods is he the person who was killed by the joker and brought back in a lazarus pit and became crazy or just is his origin slightly different than that um and I'm getting other <laughs> Jason Todd origins, too, elsewhere, to add to my confusion. I feel like I had a, a few more points, but I can't, can't think of them now. Um, so anyway, good issue. Look forward to the next. Uh, the, art, the art was a little weaker, this issue. It felt more rushed. I felt like the script was still on par, but, but everything felt a little less exciting because the art even though it was by the same art team, essentially, uh, just was not as on point. Uh, the action, the little bit of action there was, was not done in, in as exciting a way. Everything was staged a little bit less, in a little bit less dynamically. And I guess that would be the result of a, an artist working fast and having less time to think through the best way to present everything. It wasn't egregious or anything like that. But I think that that's, um, Joshua Hayes talked about how there's, each issue has been slightly less good than the last. Um, so in, a, in the sense of the art, I kind of feel you there. Although I felt issue two was the best of the three so far. Uh, hopefully there is not, you know, there is this fear of a weekly book that they can't really keep up with, that everything will slowly fall apart. And I, I'm optimistic right now that that's not the case. Um, Okay, where did I... Oh, and then Pete Tomasi's Arkham Knight Genesis. I would say if you're curious about this Arkham Knight stuff, get the Arkham Knight Genesis over the, Ar the plain Batman Arkham Knight comic book. This one is really where all the important stuff is happening. And this issue was an amazing, dark, disturbing, scary issue. Um where, you know, uh, Jason Todd as horrific victim, um, the, the stakes are really up there. And um, that he is tortured for six months by the Joker and Batman does not find him. And then, um, you know, to the point where, where he is a destroyed, beaten person who will do anything the Joker wants is very powerful and does make you feel mad at Batman for not having rescued him. And, um, and then the Joker apparently kills him. And I can't wait for the next issue to find out how this... Is this some trick? Did the Joker not really kill him? Because torturing him to the point of being a destroyed human being, and I think sometimes that's what torture is really for, is to just destroy the humanity of a person. Um, uh, we are shown him apparently dead. But is he dead? Um, you know, or 
is he dead and he's going to be risen again or uh, he's he's dead enough of being destroyed as a human being that that would be enough to make him the Arkham Knight. So I don't know which way Tomas is going with this. I assume we'll be shown more. Um, although it's also implied, and this is bizarre, that Joker is going to saw off his hands. Does the Arkham Knight, as we know him now, have robot hands? I, I don't know if we've actually seen his flesh and blood hands, or did I misunderstood that part, or was the Joker just joking? So, if you haven't read this, and I, I hope you've seen, I probably will put a, a note that there are spoilers in here. I hope you ha aren't watching if you didn't want this spoiled. Um, but if you haven't read it, you've now kind of gathered how dark it is from some of my comments there. Uh, the art was also excellent. Um, yeah, this this is a totally different mood, a totally different reading experience, even though it involves many of the same characters and the same city and some of the same issues about Batman as your mentor, Batman as the your father figure and the person who in whose footsteps you try to follow, but a totally different take on it. Very interesting experience to experience these two different takes on it. The scene on the cover does not happen. Um, maybe it will happen next issue, but it's an awesome painting by uh, Stefan Sajic. Um, Stefan Sajic, who's kind of an up and coming artist these days, although mostly working at Top Cow, unfortunately. But, uh, it looks totally painted to me. I, I understand that he's a very digital artist, so maybe this is a digital painting. Or maybe he steps away from the computer every once in a while and does a real painting. Um, but that's pretty amazing, too. So, anyway, a great a great Batman week. It might, you know, rare, usually lately, I even though I still like superhero books, I think my favorite books have been... Um, the indie books, the non-superhero books lately. But with with this one, this may have been my favorite book of the week, and this was just very close behind it. Um, although I haven't finished reading all the books I bought yet this week. I haven't read the fade out yet, so that could, that could beat out these books. Um, but anyway, I am now feeling really good at the moment about the choice to hop on this weekly and, and give it a shot. Talk to you all next week or in the next video.